Nintendo has finally released their first month sales for the Nintendo Switch. And it is the number one selling console in March. Sold 906,000 units. It is the fastest selling console in the history of Nintendo. And one of the fastest selling video game consoles ever for any company. I believe the PS4 is the fastest selling console of all time. And Zelda sold more than 1.3 million units. But the odd part is it sold 925,000 copies on the Switch when there's only 906,000 Switch consoles sold. Over 100% attach rate. Rich, what are you feeling about that? The greatness <laughs> of Legend of Zelda. I already said it's all nostalgia. No, we, we had this discussion because I asked him what the disparity is, and he said he was finding sources that were basically people bought the collector's edition and the regular edition to open up and play. Which is what Nintendo said. Bought a limited edition, didn't want to open it up. And with the Amiibo secondary market, that makes perfect sense to me that you guys bought a game twice to play once. That makes perfect sense. That's why I think that Nintendo doesn't understand the business. It's about the nostalgia factor and... And, you know, it, it is a great game. I, I get that. It's getting great reviews. It obviously is a system seller. But I really don't think that they have anything much beyond that. They do have their IPs, as I said, but it's, it's the same thing. You're just buying it because it's Zelda. Just like our, our previous segment. We're going to go see Star Wars because it's Star Wars. Yeah. I agree with Rich wholeheartedly. Like, it's... Uh, people buying the the extra, of course, Nintendo. It's not gonna. <laughs> what are they gonna say? It's money towards them, you know. Yeah. It's just a. I don't know. They marketed it good. I mean, that's it for that too. But again, it was the only game really to purchase that's the it, Switch. Yeah. yeah. So, because I remember um, when we first discussed in one of our previous episodes, when uh, they did research around 80, 85% attach rate, that was like during like the, the beginning, when they first getting the data during the first week. And then Rich was like, that seems a little low, like 80, 85%, like, because that was the only game. I wouldn't imagine anyone buying a Switch if you weren't planning on buying Zelda. Of why you would invest $300 for what? But that's what you're saying is basically 19,000 people didn't, right? 19,000 of those copies sold and it wasn't because they were buying the Switch, they were buying Zelda. That was kind of my argument is if you're selling software, now there were almost a million people that in these, this opening period that went and spent the money for the game and then 300 for the system on top of that, but there's at least 19,000 of those sales where they either had the game in the system or they had it on the previous console, the Wii U, and then they bought the the, the collector's edition, which was only for Switch, right? And then, or or they bought it anticipating, well, eventually I'll have it, but right now I don't need a Switch. I do need Zelda, and that's what they bought. And that's exactly what I'm saying is they would make more money off of focusing on software alone as opposed to gimmicky systems that they. Like with the Nintendo milk and Classic. Cows all day. Milk and cows no, all day. No, Nintendo Classic, that's a good example. You couldn't keep up with the demand. But if you sold I'm not an ready. emulator I'm not prepared package, for that conversation yet. But if they had an emulator package, you could have bought that same thing, 10 bucks on your phone, on a tablet, gotten the same experience, and you wouldn't have had scarcity because it would have been a digital download. You can't run out of it. And they would have, they would have serviced their market better. Which means that you will eventually, whether it's short term, which I think short term you would have made more money too because this thing was sold out and there were wait lists. Well, if all those people got to put down money, they would have made money plus they didn't have the manufacturing costs. So they would have made more money than they did. And everybody said it was a big success. So I'm talking about even bigger success. I'm not an asshole. I don't want them to go out of business. I want them to be as strong as possible. What, what? I want them to cater to the most people that they can as opposed to... I'm a guy that would buy their shit, and they've told me I can go fuck myself. So I told them, you know what? Not fuck me, fuck you. And I don't fuck, <laughs> fuck me, fuck you. Yeah, I love exactly. it. Exactly. I love it. This guy I right here. I don't. I don't. Guy, I feel that guy. they have. They they basically given me the finger, so I gave them one back, and we went our separate ways. Yeah. What was but the, I'm one of those guys that could be adopting this, and I'm not. No, no. And I see where you're coming from. I mean, I 
I Sony kind of did the same thing to me. And I'm not a I'm not a apologist or a fanboy for Microsoft, but right yeah. now the current generation, the Xbox One is the only one I have because as far as what I've been looking for in a system, all around gaming and, and entertainment, affordability and the titles I was looking for, the Xbox One was the one that reached me the easiest. So that's all. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, mm-hmm. that's that's how I was uh, with the same thing with PlayStation Four. It was. Same, same, same boat as you, you know. Um, um, you know, for what was in that limited edition for Zelda? Like, I don't even know what was included in it. It was, it was. What did it even include anything big? Because a lot, Isn't I think there I, like a cloth map. Of yeah, Hyrule? like Hyrule and like a little keychain thing and whatever else. Yeah. I didn't see anything like. Usually, when I buy like collector's editions, um, they include something big or a statue. Like I'm big into this, the whole statue things. I like those things, because um, um, I know what they're worth. I know what the price is. If yeah. you if you go into a comic book store and you go and you look at those those like Harley Quinn or Batman or any type yeah. of statue, seventy five to one hundred fifty yeah. standard. So if I'm Guaranteed. getting that in the game for one hundred and twenty, yeah, I think that I've sold a good purchase. I'm yeah. sold. Yeah. So that's what I look for, and I don't even think they included anything like that. So I didn't see a worthwhile purchase in that. I do know people that purchased both. Uh, just the regular game and the limited edition, and never opened the limited edition. Which they, the, the, I know, before. I know a couple. I know yeah, because that's what Nintendo said. If and people like, bought the limited, didn't open it, and just got why? the game. Like, there's, I, there's nothing. I didn't see anything special because to they it. they've been but, marketed to, and they love the IP, which they should. It's great. Right. Yeah. But they basically are letting that overrule good financial decisions, which is why Nintendo can force a three hundred dollar system on there that it doesn't really need to be there nintendo could put those resources to i don't know churning out more than two games a year yeah well that was the plan with the switch was put more resources so they can because that was the the failure of the wii u an absolute no, the cluster failure of the wii u is because they didn't innovate and it was all marketing bullshit and they figured the amiibo would carry them through the storm and it didn't and, and all it did was create a, a secondary market but they're they're taking advantage of them and they don't need to especially because you don't need to take care you don't need to take advantage of anybody you certainly don't need to do it to children and they're making plenty of money and if they would do it in a in a better way like i said the software only approach there's less manufacturing costs the same research and development costs distribution goes down your attach rate goes up though you're making more money. Pokemon Go, I keep going back to them. I know it's not their game, but it's a good example of what their IPs are capable of. They would make a lot more money. Even they got the bump when people thought that was their title. Just yeah. the idea that Nintendo was part of that gave them a, a huge bump, billions of dollars. And even after it got corrected, it, they were still up $2 billion in worth. Why does this happen? Because people are that attached to it. But you're selling me bad product. If you get food poisoning at Krispy Kreme, you don't go there anymore. They're great donuts, but if you got sick, you'd stop going there. But for yeah, whatever something against Krispy Kreme. That was just an example, yeah. but for whatever reason, because we're so attached to these other things, we keep going there and shopping and buying their crap. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and then half the controllers were broken. Eighty percent, right? It, is what I, we I feel, concluded. I feel eighty percent. We know five people with switches. Four of the five, the left Joy-Con does not work. And I mean, Mo is one. The and they one. all bought at different stores. Yeah. So it wasn't just one batch at the same retailer. Right, different right. stores. They all came from all different places. I mean, that that is not good. To, that's not a good start, regardless of if they're selling or making sell. Now I'm trying to start to wonder, like, how many of these people are pissed off now because they can't even use a controller like the way that it's supposed to be utilized. You can well, send it in for free and get it back. I understand. Then one week, but it's it's still. You send yours in. I can't let it go. See, that's, that's my point. He hasn't played in a couple weeks. He could send it in. You get it back in a week. Yeah. But he hasn't felt the necessity to do it because he knows until Mario Kart, he doesn't need it. So he's not focused on it. Even Here's then, the thing. I have Mass Effect. How many, how many people are not even looking for Mario Kart because it's basically it's the HD remaster version? Battle mode. Whatever. There's not really that many people that are in com- into competitive Mario Kart that much where they need that one little extra advantage level. But I do understand why they're doing it, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, because not many people bought the Wii U, and not many people played Mario Kart 8 because well, of that. The Wii U was what the Switch was supposed to be. But wait, it's a, good, it's a good game though, right? It's a great game. I loved it. But nobody played it because they did it the wrong way. No, and the Wii U, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. If wrong. you put it in, a, in your consumer's hands in a way that, yeah, you've got a million consoles out there now... The U.S. The yeah, US, yeah, yeah, but you, 
you've got now you've got the the yeah. ability to, to market that to them because people didn't buy the Wii U because they had forced a crappy machine on us. Right now we're riding the Zelda train. Yep. But if the Zelda train wasn't there, do you think those numbers would be where they're at? No, not even close. If it was Mario Kart Eight, the you know this this deluxe version, <laughs> would it have done the numbers? Because the Switch is not necessary on its own. So the the numbers nine hundred six thousand that was in the the U.S. Again, they have sold millions worldwide. Uh, Four hundred sixty thousand was on the Wii U. Again, that's what they promised that the Zelda will be on the Wii U. So they did keep that promise. Um, but with Mario Kart Eight, um, Rich, you were talking about would it has sold as much as Mario Kart Eight was the launch title? Yeah, it wouldn't have. I think no. we can all agree to that. Yeah. It because was, there's not a noticeable difference between the Wii U and the Switch. My point was, when we jumped from the NES to the Super Nintendo, Super Nintendo to the Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1 to 2 or 2 to 3, there's a noticeable difference in game quality, the ability of the system itself, availability, all, all kinds of things. New partnerships they made with third-party vendors. Nintendo was still their little entrenched, enclosed niche market where they used to be the innovator in the industry. They used to, they built the video game industry or they rebuilt it after Atari, you know, bailed out. Yeah. So, but now, e. they, and now they've turned away. They're, they're focused solely on their titles, which are great titles, but that's what made, makes them a better running version of Sega, which is you've got good titles or great IP. If you get away from having to churn out these systems and trying to be competitive, and when I, I understand why people are afraid of the one console kind of future, why we think innovation will only come through competition, but sometimes competition that's needless can, can destroy the whole industry. Because when there's 15 people and they're all doing it badly, or 14 of the 15 are doing it badly, or 10 of the 15 are, they get a bad reputation. And these other companies go out of business. So when they don't have the, the resources to build their own IPs and those titles you know everybody can get Madden on every single system so that's how EA that's how we ended up with EA is because they put it cross pollination they didn't care but at one point EA was considering making their own console EA wouldn't be the company it is good or bad if they had done that because we didn't need more comp competition in the system market you don't need that because there's nothing that is really that much difference, which is why we all have this fanboy marketing bullshit arguments about Sony's better than Microsoft, Microsoft's better than Nintendo, Nintendo's better than Sega. We all go back to that because we're fighting the battle if they're making us fight. We're all gamers. We shouldn't be having these Everyone arguments. wins. But we don't if companies like we almost lost Sega. Now, they haven't done as good with their second chance. But they did almost get obliterated because of their missteps. What if that happened to Nintendo? Because as much as I rage against them on this show, I don't want to lose Zelda. I don't want to lose Mario Brothers. I don't want to lose Metroid. I don't want to lose Pokemon. I don't want to lose a lot of this stuff. And the Wii U was a huge misstep. And Huge. And let's be honest. They lucked out because the Wii appealed to seniors because it was the first step in virtual reality. That's the only reason. is That was proof of concept for that. And it was easy to get into, and it was somewhat inexpensive, and there weren't cords involved with the headsets for Oculus or the PSVR, right? That's the only reason it's what it was. Zeus wanted to join in on this uh, Nintendo he chat. He, he understands. Knows, that's why he's silent. He's he like, I don't understand why you bought the Switch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he go doesn't. Shoot up. Go shoot up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever plays. Do it. Do it now. Yeah. We're doing when he shits podcast. out my uh, left Joy-Con, now I know why it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for helping Daddy with that. <laughs> yeah. you no, know, they if if we lost them, it would be a huge blow to the industry and to creativity in this industry. But I think they would be a Sega and just make games for. They could, yeah, they, 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 they absolutely could. But then if that's if that seems like a viable alternative, then why are we agreeing that I need to buy a Joy-Con? Why do I not just buy Zelda and it's available on the Xbox One? Or I can you can borrow my Wii U. I don't want to. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play it either. Exactly. On the Wii U. Again, you're, you're borrowing my Switch. Um, but you made a great point about the Zelda gravy train. Again, that was their launch. What else would they be able to do? They had their direct. Again, now this was their plans, the post-Zelda launch, what type of games. 
Um, so they did finally Splatoon 2 release date July 21st. Again, I loved the first Splatoon on the Wii U, one of the very few games. Again, they started a new IP, which was great. Again, my boy, my boy Zeus loves Nintendo. So join in. He doesn't. He does. He liked he, he liked me. watching me play Zelda. Uh, Splatoon 2, they introduced a new horde mode called the, the Salmon Run. So you get a four group, and then you have to take out enemies, wave of enemies, trying to collect these eggs. So again, that was a new, that was the one thing I was talking about, is they need to find a way to make this look like an actual sequel than just a 1.5. Um, like something that I might even play. Again, I actually loved the single player campaign in the first one. It was four to five hours. I'll let you guys come over and, and see it. That's one game I think you guys would actually enjoy. The strategy involved. No, the first game was a big... A big... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to say here. It was, big. it was big. It was no, big. No, it was popular. It was getting good yeah. reviews. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was reviews. a system seller, but it was yeah. It was influential. Yeah, and it was, was good when Nintendo needed to come up with new IPs. They can't just go do Mario, Zelda. Well, Metroid, they forgot. I think they locked that in a vault. It's in the Disney no, vault Team somewhere. Ninja burned it to the ground. Son of a bitch. Um, Splatoon 2 release date July 21st. And then ARMS, the fighting game, releases June 16th. So this is their next wave of big first party titles. ARMS, June 16th. Splatoon 2, July 21st. And ARMS, you can get two different ARMS. They showed on the direct uh, strategy. And it's 2v2 or 1v1. So what does they, this appeal to you? That's actually a great question. I'm not bought in yet <laughs> with arms okay because you know every time we brought Did up you? upcoming titles yeah. arms and splatoon that was it other than zelda has been what you've mentioned all the time but you weren't even bought in it was the point that you brought up as in there's only these big first parts out and the direct i don't know did you guys read anything about, about the direct or anything mm, no so it was fast-paced they had it was 38, 40 minutes. They had when you have no news, I don't understand. A how it lot goes of so fast. announcements. They had like three DS games, like what's it going to do with the three DS, like small little games. You already have a new mobile. I don't know why you need a three DS. And some people, hey, you have millions of people who bought it. Want to show them that they we don't didn't, care about that. That we didn't That's forget. That's my whole point. They don't give a shit. They want you to buy the new stuff. At least they've been the nice switch. enough to put it on both generations. The show that's not completely dead. Um, but arms, it's based off of what type of modes they have. Is it just battle? Then no, I want to know if there's some like career mode, campaign mode, like they do for like Street Fighter. What kind or of story Kombat. do you want from arms? Well, no, 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 no. Same thing with like Street Fighter. Like, is there a way? Is it just you put in a battle and fight? So I'm not. I totally... wasn't always the spring you see in front of you. <laughs> Uh, I not, came from a dark place, but I dragged myself out of that hell. My my, my arms weren't always made out of slinkies, but hey, it was noodles. And now I'm painted no, it was noodles. orange, but you're gonna see an arm made I've out got of some noodles. Pain in my my character. <laughs> Old man arms. That's what it's gonna be. Old man <laughs> arms. But Splatoon. She's just like you, arms. She's just like you. <laughs> <laughs> we have the story. Hey, we, got we have the story. They have the story mode. I'm bought in right now. I'm in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go pre-order. Someone it. else will come along. No one else is gonna buy this game. Arms. It has to be us. We're we're already here. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm gonna buy it now, just in spite of this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that's one Nintendo. You're hey. on your way. Have fun with that sixty dollars. The developer's yeah. mom. So that's another ten people. That's eleven. There you go. You got eleven sold. Nine hundred and thirty thousand more to go. I'm, yeah, I'm not totally bought in with it. It was it was too long. You just they, lost one. Nintendo. Yeah, that, is, <laughs> <laughs> that quick. Um, I think I'll be too busy playing, trying to catch up by the time. But it's a fighting game. But put in like, we'll see. Splatoon two. I'm I'm bought in. I'm already in. But it comes a point as in third-party support are they really going to have their first party be able to support this so they have these two f major f first party games mario odyssey in the holiday hopefully e3 they come up with the big guns to show this is what we're going to do for the next year so we can have a big game each month a big game each month i thought i was going to set you off dude i'm holding it for the nes classic i am holding it for the nes classic edition before yeah, I just explode. Poke the bear. So hopefully in E3 they actually show the third party support 
to actually support this console. Um, hopefully they learned the lesson that first party support is not going to be enough. Hopefully they get some third party support that takes advantage of the gimmick, supposedly. Of the gimmick. Of the Joy-Con. And if I can fucking buy a pro controller, that would be cool as well. Make those for retails. Whatever. I, I, I don't... <laughs> Fucking left Joy-Con. <laughs> it's all right. But what is, what do you guys think is the future uh, uh, of the Switch? Do you think you'll be able to sustain the momentum that it started? No. I mean, because Mo, you, you have a Switch. You just bought Blaster Master. I just bought so Blaster you're Master. in, uh, mm-hmm. and you bought Bomberman. Got Bomberman. Yeah, uh, for this not nostalgia feel and. Getting back the the classic, going back to the original classic Bomberman that they had, not all this crazy shit that they were putting in Bomberman. The gritty reboot. Yeah, yeah the gritty reboot. Yeah. So I, I liked it a lot. Um, I mean, I want them to maintain momen- momentum. I want them to bring back some of the some of the NES classics as remakes too. I did look at the at the Nintendo store today. I did see Wonder Boy on there, uh, remade into HD, and uh, it looks pretty good. Or like it has like an anime style type of uh, run and slash um, and you can play the original 8-bit and you can play the new one so you can choose so that 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 kind of captured me a little bit and I was like okay this is a good step it's not a pricey game either it's like I think I think I saw it for $15 which is not bad you get the full game for for however you want to play it and if you want the nostalgia feel it's there um, if they continue doing stuff like that I, I will be a happy customer but I want to see you know the kid chameleon. You know I want to I want to see those those games coming back. I don't want, uh, you know, some little uh, indie indie games because you know I I like indie games. I just I want to see something big from them. I want to I expect a lot out of them. Yeah. Because right now they have and again I'm not calling Arms a big game. Yeah. Um, they just have Splatoon two and Mario Odyssey, or the only two big games announced right. for the right. Switch. So E three they need to come. No treehouse cool. bullshit. Please. I hate treehouse. But you're coming over and we're watching treehouse. I'm not watching mm-hmm. goddamn treehouse. But we're watching the treehouse. Fuck the treehouse. I'll burn that bitch down. I swear to God. I don't give a so fuck. So you're going to burn the bitch down and Rich is going to choke the bitch. Right. Can I do mine first? Because I don't want to burn my hand. <laughs> <laughs> so Man that- on fire. Okay. <laughs> Well, my Denzel Washington. Yes. With my weird deformed hand. Watch, you'll you'll never not see it now. Look. Here's a deformed hand. Yeah. Wait, actual Denzel Washington or the yes, character in Man on Fire? Denzel Washington has a deformed hand. Yeah. Like a Shia LaBeouf deformed hand, or. <laughs> Just watch, yeah. Okay. I'll burn that bitch down. I don't give a fuck. So that is our take on the Nintendo <laughs> Switch news. I know. Time is on my side. I know Mo and Rich always gets excited when we talk about the Nintendo Switch, and again, the number one selling console put PS4 and Xbox One to shame. The number one console, the Nintendo Switch. Fate of the Furious was also the biggest global opening of all time. Of all time. Your argument is invalid. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to bring in more than a billion dollars. Easily. Probably will. That's why I'll never watch that movie. Doesn't mean it's good. Please let us know in the comments below what you felt about the Nintendo Direct, ARMS, and Splatoon 2.